Hi, today we're going to talk about how to find a good real estate deal. You know, you can talk about this business all you want to and all the ins and outs, but nothing happens if you don't find a deal. I'm Mitch Steven and I've purchased a property about every four to five days in or about my hometown of San Antonio, Texas for over two decades. I buy houses like regular people buy rolls of toilet paper every day. It's what I'm doing. I'm an expert at buying houses. There are so many ways to find houses it's not even funny, but we're going to talk about some of the ways. Starting with a little bitty budget or no budget all the way up to a pretty lucrative budget. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a whole list of resources that could help you in your journey to mine for houses. Early in my career, I would put out hundreds upon hundreds of bandit signs. And when I didn't have a house to look at, I was putting out bandit signs, trying to get a lead so there was a house to look at. And that was my MO. It only took a little bit of luck from those signs to produce a house that made me 20 grand. And now I have a budget. I don't have a very big budget, because I was scared. I needed money to live on. I didn't know how long that 20 grand was going to last. And so I was very new in this business and I didn't want to spend a lot, but I made myself a little budget. That little budget might have included someone else to go put out signs while I followed up on the few leads that I had. And, and that didn't take very much. So the rubber meets the road by finding a house. Anything that's less than finding a house is not really what you need to be doing. So on a zero budget, bandit signs are good. If you have a little bit of money, then you can go into driving for dollars. It takes gas, it takes a car, it takes wear and tear on a car. Maybe it takes a cell phone and some apps, but you can drive for dollars. And driving for dollars just means basically what it says. You get in your car, you start driving neighborhoods up and down the streets, all the streets, looking for vacant or abandoned houses or looking for houses that obviously the owner is in trouble because you can tell by the disrepair or the state of the property that it's probably not a good story. And so we'll do driving for dollars. In the beginning, maybe you're driving for dollars. In the end, when you have bigger budgets, maybe you're paying other people to drive for dollars. I found that in an average day driving, I could pick up between 90 and 130 leads on vacant houses or houses in disrepair. Most of them would be vacant houses. That's really what I'm looking for some place where no one's living in it and then I really like when I do the research to see that not only is the owner not living in it but I can find an address where the owner lives someplace else because the driving doesn't just stop when you find the house that's vacant it'll stop when you find where the owner lives and so I drive my car over there and talk to that guy it's probably one of the simplest and most invigorating ways because while you're driving for dollars you should be calling on every for sale sign you see just to start to know the price of that neighborhood to know what they're asking you know one of the things I teach uh, my students when they're brand new in a business is to know the values in their areas how do you do that is you call on every for sale house there is and ask what's the price how many square feet how many square feet is it how many bedrooms is it and then if you do that a hundred times in a row and then on the hundred and first time you call someone and you start to recognize a number that seems very low now you know you have deals so driving for dollars and bandit signs are things that we can do to begin with so you know it's not as glamorous as they make it on the TV shows you know as a matter of fact they don't even really talk about it on the TV show they just show up and say I have this house I can buy for half price you know <laughs> well okay that's great but how the hell did you find this house? You know, wouldn't that be nice to know? Well, they get found by driving for dollars or by using bandit signs or, as we're going to discuss now, things that take a little bit more of a budget. You know, we can buy lists of houses that have had different problems happen to them, like maybe they had property code violations filed against them. These are all things that are happening at the courthouse. Usually we go to the courthouse to find these properties that have problems. And every problem is like a filter, you know. Give me a house. Every house in town shows up. Give me houses that the owner doesn't live in that house. That's a filter. Less houses fall through. Give me a house where the owner doesn't live in the house and it's had a property code violation filed against it. It's another filter. Less houses fall through. Every time you put a filter on, 
With every filter, less houses fall into your bucket. But the more valuable the houses in the bucket are to you, the more likely that the person you're going to find that owns it will want to sell to you. So it's all about what's the list, what filters are you using, how many people can you afford to call on or mail to, and then adjust the filters to get only that many leads in the bucket so that you'll have the highest quality lead for the amount of money in your budget. This is where being broke or having a small budget really kind of works out. If you have a really big budget, you needed 10,000 people in your bucket, then you got to take a bunch of filters out of your list. So you're getting less and less and less qualified customers in the bucket. When you have a very tight budget and you only have 400 bucks to spend, you can put in so many filters in your list that only 400 people fall in that bucket. And those 400 people have been through so many filters that they're very high quality. So don't think for a minute just because you can't put up the numbers doesn't mean you, you're, you can't be successful. You can actually be more successful with 400 super highly qualified people in the bucket to call on than you would be if you had 10,000 people in the bucket that aren't so qualified. Last but not least, big budget. What's a big budget? Man, there's people that spend 100,000 a month in some cases. I'm not that guy, but I have spent up to $10,000 a month mailing tens of thousands of people. You know, one of the things I like to do is create a mailer or a postcard and send it out to 10,000 people a month, 10,000 different people a month. My town has about 2 million, 2.5 million people in, if you count the surrounding areas. So it takes a long time to get through all that list. In fact, half that list I probably don't even want because they're perfectly beautiful houses with people that have no problems. You know, I'm looking for not so beautiful houses that have problems or people that have problems. I like to say I buy situational properties or I buy from people who have situations and that's what I'm looking for. But as you get more and more of a budget, you can start to take your hands off the wheel, quit doing things yourself, and start to sub things out. So you can hire uh, marketing companies. You can hire telemarketing companies who will start to call. You can hire skip tracing companies who will find out where the owner lives and what his phone number is and what his email is. You can start to get all this information delivered to you again, as I mentioned previously, making sure that you're doing the important parts more and more and more with every day you're doing more of what's important and less of the labor what's important is that you knock on the door of a man that owns a house that you're interested in buying and that you have a conversation with him that's what's important everything less than that you should be ultimately trying to sub out when you don't have a budget you can't sub it out when you do have a budget you can start to think about subbing it out when you really become a business owner you will sub it out with at least 200 ways to find properties we could have this conversation for a long, long time. I could talk to you about this subject for weeks. So since we only have about 10 minutes here, I'd like to just go ahead and give you a resources page. So if you'll click on the link below, I'm going to give you the resources. And it's a resource page that will connect you with different CRMs that I've used or that I like. CRM meaning customer relations management systems. It'll connect you with driving for dollar apps. It'll collect you with skip tracing people or companies. It'll connect you with a whole host of networks of people that you might use to help you find more houses and more lucrative houses. So just click on the link below and you will be able to get my little resource page and check them out. There's no obligation. They're, I, don't, I don't own these companies. They're just companies I know of or that I've used or that I hear from other people are good. So if you like this conversation, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be going deeper into the ways to find houses. So hit the subscribe button and don't miss a thing.